because I like to be centered. Y'all know I be funny when I be setting everything up. How y'all doing? Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Park, and I am your host. I am so super excited. I am refreshed. I am ready to teach. I'm so excited about wife school. Our first class starts this Sunday. Everybody should have gotten their welcome email and their first assignment. If you haven't, please check your spam folder or um, contact me directly. Like send me a message and let me know, hey, Miss Sharonda, I did not get the first assignment. So let's talk about for better or worse. Because one thing I know and, and what I think is the the driving force with me teaching this wife school is I'm really teaching from experience. Like when I'm saying I'm teaching from, from experience, it's so much that I have experienced within 22 years of marriage. And I'm really allowing myself to be extremely transparent with my successes in marriage and my failures in marriage. And I just think that when people stand at the altar and they get to saying those words for better or worse, I don't think they understand the severity of for better or worse because everybody wants the sunshiny days, but they don't understand that the rain comes too. And they don't understand a lot of times the growth comes from the rain. Everybody have different stages in life. A lot of times when we make a birthday, we say, oh, this is the next chapter. We're going into the next chapter. When we make an anniversary, we're going into the next chapter, right? But sometimes when you go back and you look at those chapters, especially those chapters early on, when you hadn't experienced the growing pains, when you hadn't gained the wisdom and the knowledge, sometimes when you look at those chapters, they're not really pretty. So when I'm teaching this, I'm teaching this from a place of transparency. I'm teaching this from a place of not being ashamed of whatever I have went through in life, marriage, as a parent, as a woman, I'm teaching it from that perspective, okay? So, when we stand at that altar and we say for better or worse, we don't know what the worst is going to be. Because if we knew what the worst is going to be, then we can make the choice right then and say, do I really want to do this? Or do I not want to do this? And then I always ask people, especially when they come to sex, culture, and relationship counseling, what if God allowed you to pick your worst? What would your worst be? If we could pick a worst. Because we don't necessarily know what the worst is going to be. But we stand at that altar and we make a conscious decision to say that I'm going to be with you through the good and the bad. But we don't know what the bad is going to be. And we don't know what the good is going to be. But we make a commitment to something that we don't even know that we're going to experience. But I'm a firm believer that when those vows, the people that created those vows, because marriage vows not in the Bible. I'm a firm believer that the people that created those marriage vows, when they created it, they knew you was going to go through some shit. Because if they didn't think you was going to go through anything in marriage, they wouldn't have put it in there. So let me tell you something. Married people, a lot of times you have single people trying to give you advice on marriage. That's why I just told my daughter this weekend, my, my daughter that's 21, you can't tell me shit about marriage because you ain't sacrificed nothing from no, for nobody. You ain't went through nothing with nobody. You ain't even ever maintained a relationship in your life. So how the fuck you gonna tell anybody anything about what they should be doing in a marriage? You got to be mindful of who you're taking your advice from. Because see, a lot of times, even your children will be on the outside looking in, not understanding why you're moving, how you're moving. And that's the truth. If you read the title of this video, it says, P, 
people in relationships feel like they shouldn't have problems. But that is the actual problem. They feel like they shouldn't have problems. But in any relationship that you're dealing with people, people, you will have an issue. You will have something that you got to deal with. There's no perfection in people. A lot of people walk around talking about, oh, I wouldn't be putting up with that. Or I wouldn't be dealing with that. But that's the thing. That's your for better or worse. It might not be they for better or worse. I tell people all the time, I can deal with all kind of shit, but I can't deal with no junkie. That's my hard limit. In other words, it's a lot of shit I can deal with. But I can't deal with no motherfucker that got no addiction. Because that's a whole nother different ball game. In my opinion. So can't nobody tell you what your for better or worse is going to be. For you, your worst may be, oh, I can't deal with no infidelity. I can't deal with no other woman. I can't deal with them kind of issues like that. But I, I deal with you being a fucking uh, a hammer on at it. You can pop all the fucking pills you want. You can take all our money and go give it to the drug people. That, may, that might not be your hard limit. Another woman might be your hard limit. Another person's hard limit may be, oh, everything we work for, you can go gamble it away, you can go sell it. Another person uh, issue may be you can keep going to jail over and over and over and over again and I'm going to be there for you every time. Every time you go to jail, I'm going to be right there sending them letters, showing up for visits. And another woman may say, I can't deal with no jailbird. I can't deal with somebody who can't function in society and is always locked up and I got to be there and take care of them. My point that I'm trying to make you understand is we all will have issues and problems because there's no perfection in people. But we have to understand what our hard limit is. We have to understand what's going to make us walk away. See, a lot of people can't deal with mental health. And I'm going to talk about mental health because I've been there. Am I a crazy person? Fuck no, I ain't crazy. But there was a point in time in my life well, I really had to go get some help. And when I'm saying go get some help, I'm talking about go and stay in a mental facility and actually check in and get a fucking bed assigned to me to go get help. And you know who ain't missed a visiting day? Spencer Parker. Not one. He was there every day. And who was there to pick me up when I, when I, when I got checked out? And who went and got all my prescriptions filled? Spencer Parker. So can't no motherfucker tell me about better or worse. Because you don't know what life gonna bring you. And when my mama died, I felt like that was the worst thing that could have possibly happened to me in life. To the point where I literally checked out. Mentally. Checked out. From being a wife. Checked out. From being a mother. Check out from being a fucking employee. Check out mentally. But my husband was right there. And if you talk to him, he would have said that, you know what? This was his for better or worse. Because he would have never thought that the woman that he stood at the altar and married would have just switched up on him like that. To the point where he woke up every day and didn't even know who this woman was that he laid next to. That he prayed for and say, Lord, give me my wife back. You can't tell me about for better or worse. Because we don't get to pick our worse. And by the grace of God, he restored me. Mine and everything. And this was way before a PPG store was birthed. So can't nobody tell me about for better or worse. So guess what? How is it that your, your spouse could be there for you for your for better or worse? But then when they for better or worse roll around, you be like, oh no. Uh -uh. I can't be there for you with this here. Because you a man. And you're supposed to have it all together. And you're supposed to have it under control. 
Because you a man. Come on, y'all. Make it make sense. We got all this compassion. When it come down to a woman going through what she go through. But when a man go through what he go through. We moving the fuck around. Because he a man. And he ain't supposed to get weary. He a man. And he ain't supposed to check out mentally. He a man. And he's supposed to have it under. Because he the protector and the provider. And how you going to be the protector and provider. And he weak at this point in his life. And in his weakness. We feel like. Oh this is our opportunity to walk away. With his job weighing down on him and treating him like he ain't shit. And he's supposed to come home and we're supposed to be the peace. And we have no compassion and no understanding. Even the churn ain't got no compassion or understanding. And be like, fuck him. That ain't nobody but daddy. What I need to go fix him a, a glass of water for? What I need to go run this bath water for? What I need to fix this plate of food for? There ain't nobody but daddy. But as mothers, we have to even teach our children compassion. For better or worse means nothing but understanding that there is a time, in, a time in your marriage where you will have to have compassion for your spouse. Where you have to be supportive for your spouse and be there for your spouse. That's all it means. Meaning that there's a chapter in the book. There's a season in the marriage. Where you might have you might have went through something. But this is the next part of the video. What happens when everybody want to throw what you went through in your face? What happens when everybody want to tell you about how you was crazy and had to be on antidepressants and all of this kind of shit. And they want to throw that shit in your face. Because God delivered you from it. But they ain't got nothing else on you. Nothing else to talk about. Other than to remind you where you came from. What happens when your children want to tell you. How you took the money. And was uh, taking X pills and popping pills and all of this shit. But you ain't that person no more. See, I ain't never popping no X pills, but I'm talking about that might be your story. What happened when these same fucking children that you work two jobs to make sure they had anything and everything that they need stand in your motherfucking face and tell you how you were never there because you was out there working. We don't get to pick off for better or worse. Sometimes off for better or worse can be our fucking children. Create division. You don't get the you don't get the picture for better or worse. Sometimes the, for better or worse can be the children not liking the other parent, the step parent, and it creates an issue between the parents. So if you signing up for marriage and you thinking you ain't gonna have no problems in this shit, don't sign up for it. Don't. If you signing up for marriage and you think that you ain't going to go through shit in marriage, don't sign up for it. Because you will. And when you run into them people who always got their fucking mouth fixed to talk about what all they ain't going to do and what all they ain't going to put up with, I want you to look at them people and pay attention to their life. And pay attention to how they can't maintain relationships because every time they get in one, they can't they can't put up with nothing. They can't tolerate nothing. They can't go through nothing. Because they looking for these already made build about type of people that's customized for them. And what I want you to understand is those type of people don't exist in the world. Because everybody that you meet gonna come with a flaw. So, when you got a sister that's always trying to tell you, I don't know, I wouldn't be with him. But then she done went through six dicks in one year. Because she can't be with nobody. Yeah, I'm going there. I'm going there. Because you understand your issues with the person that you got. But they done been through 30 motherfuckers. 
And guess what? All of them had issues. Every last one of them had an issue. So now they got 30 dicks under their fucking belt. All because they had to learn 30 different issues. And you still over here with your one issue that you understand and you know about. Marriage ain't no easy walk. And let me say this too. And I'm going um, to get into my products. It takes a village. They said it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to have a family. It takes a village to have a marriage. Meaning you need people to pour into you. Even as an adult. Even as a wife. Even as a sister. Even as a woman. A lot of times people always talk about this village and raising children. But your village is supposed to whisper a little word in your ear too. Y'all remember the Betty Rice song? Um, After the pain. A lot of people talk about, oh, Betty Wright was stupid. That was some stupid shit and all this kind of shit. But you remember that part in the song where she say people used to pull you to the, pull you to the side and whisper a little something in your ear and say, don't blame Mr. Charlie. He just a man and he doing the best he can. Well, we're going to rewrite that. People pull you to the side and you, and you whisper in your sister ear, sister girl. Oh, no, you, you whisper in the brother ear. Uh, sir, she just a woman. She doing the best she can. People got to pull in marriages and men and women. Because it ain't always the men messing up. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, in other words, we both mess up throughout the time of marriage. And it ain't always infidelity. And I just get so tired of everybody feeling like that's the only issue you're going to ever go through in marriage. Is another motherfucker. It got way more other shit that go on other than dealing with another motherfucker. For real. So I'm saying all that to say it take a village because we all got to pour into each other and tell each other to hang in there, girl. Y'all got this. When y'all see each other posting up y'all date nights and shit on the internet, encourage one another. Be like, oh yeah, girl, I like that. I'm, I got, I, I want to do that. I'm going to be doing that one. I had a woman that came in here last night. She said, oh, I'm doing a red light special, Miss Sharonda. I said, okay, girl, you got your light bulb? And she said, you need to sell them in the store. I said, all right, I'm going to go on Amazon and order some red light bulbs so I can keep them in, here, keep them in, here in the store for the people who want to do the red light special. A lot of people don't understand villages. And the village is only designed to hold everybody accountable. My husband hold his male friends accountable. My husband had a male friend that separated from his wife, and I swear to God, every time he would see him, he will tell him, you need to go home to your wife. You need to go over there where you love that. The village is designed to hold you accountable. When I was growing up, my man had five kids and a whole bunch of extended kids that she had been raised over the years. And we was little children growing up, up under my me. If we did something wrong, every auntie and uncle held us accountable. Meaning, if we got flipped at the mouth with our mama, not only did we have to deal with our mama, but when our auntie saw us, she let us know, you don't ever do that to your mama. You don't talk to your mama like that. Every uncle will let us know. If I hear that you talk to your mama like that, I'm going to come over there and I'm going to whoop your ass for your mama. So I'm saying all that to say this here. The village is designed to hold everybody accountable. That's what it's designed for. But we have gotten to a place as a people to where we don't want nobody to tell us nothing. We don't want to be held accountable on no end. And even when you see somebody talking to their husband real fucked up in the family, I ain't saying you correct them right there in front of their husband. But when you get them by themselves, you let them know, look, you shouldn't be doing that. that ain't right. You don't talk to your husband like that. But we to the places of people to whereas we feel like we can't tell nobody nothing because we don't want to get in nobody's business. 
if he talking to the wife any kind of way, the men in the family is supposed to pull him to the side by himself and say, look, that ain't no way you treat your wife. You don't do that. That shit ain't cool. We've gotten to a place as a people to where we don't want to hold nobody accountable. So when I'm talking about for better or worse, we don't get to pick what our worst is. We don't get to pick it. But we can encourage each other through the better or the worse. We can be supportive through the better or the worse. And that's what helps build strong families and marriages and relationships and children. That's how we build that. And that's what we're losing as a people. We're losing that. All right. Moving on to the next part of my video. Y'all see this belt? This big buckle? Kaya got them in Rhythm Boutique. Y'all, I absolutely love accessories. I went and got me one. They came in and did the photo shoot in the studio, her and her models. And Spencer did the pictures for them. And I seen a model in this belt. And let me tell you, I went on down there the next day. I went and bought me one. A lot of people think, oh, did they give you one? I don't want nobody to give me one. I went and bought me one, babe. That's how you support businesses. You go there and you spend your money and you buy it. And you ain't looking for no discount either. You just go there and buy what you want. You saw it, you like it, you go buy it. Okay? Bang Me. So I know y'all remember the original Bang Me bullets. Bang Me bullets are extra large bullets. These are actual bullets with handles on them. Like they long. Meaning you can hold them and, and rub them up on the clip and all kind of stuff like that. Well, Bang Me comes in black. It comes in pink. It comes in purple. And it comes in turquoise. Now, these are just the bullets. Bang Me has come out with the sleeve that goes over the bullet. So, this one is a bullet with a red, rabbit sleeve that goes over it. This is one of the ones that I like because I like texture. This one has the ridges on it. And if you know anything about texture, if you ever been fucked with a condom that's ripped, like a rib condom for a long time, me and my husband used to use condoms. Because I wasn't taking birth control, but I didn't want any more children. So we go to the store and we would experiment with the different kind of condoms. And they got these condoms that got, it's called a ripped condom. Meaning when you put the condom on, they got all kind of ridges and shit all over the condom. I used to love getting fucked with that, them type of condoms with the rips all over them. So this dildo bullet sleeve or whatever you want to call it has the rips on it. You see that? It got the texture on it. Now, this one here is more realistic. It got all the veins and the grooves and all of this stuff on it. So, this one here is real nice, too. Now, this one is a more smoother type texture. It's real smooth. But all of these are sleeves that go over the bullet. Let me turn them around. Y'all see, I'm holding them all together. They are on the website, by the way. All right. Moving on. Play with me is on the website as well. This is new, marked out $19.99 right now. This is a vibrating cock ring, real stretchy, waterproof. I just want to make sure I'm telling you about all the features. Now, if you look at it, it got the little rabbit ears right there to tickle the clitoris. This one takes a AAA battery. Uh, let's see. I'll make sure I'm giving you all of it. So basically, when a man wears the cock rings, this is going to be the vagina. This is going to be the penis. He's going to wear the cock ring. He's going to insert the vagina. And every time he thrusts in and out, the bullet is going to hit the clitoris. $19.99 on the website called Play With Me. This is for couples, by the way. And a lot of people start asking me, can you add this to the strap? Yes, you can. It's super stretchy. So, yes, for my lesbian ladies, you can add a toy to your strap to be able to get the same experience. Yes, you can. All right? So, here we go. Here we go. All right. So, that is going to conclude my live for today. Thank you all for tuning in. We had a lot of people on here today. So, when I upload it, oh, I'm uploaded. When I upload it to YouTube, make sure you hit the like button. Um, make sure you share it from YouTube. Make sure you share it. Because I know that this video is going to bless somebody. Because I, like I said, I know a lot of people, they have this unrealistic expectation of marriage. Unrealistic expectation of everything. Just unrealistic expectations. And I want you to understand that in, in marriage, we all going to go through some shit. The people in blended families, 
If you ask me, blended families go through a lot because you literally trying to put all of these perspectives from different households together, morals and values from different households together. Blended families go through a lot. So like I say, if you, if you thinking about marriage, just understand that when you go back and you look at that marriage and the chapters of, them, of that marriage, you're going to see some shit. Sometimes it's going to be pretty. Sometimes it's not going to be pretty. But that's why when people have an anniversary, I always tell people, celebrate your anniversaries. Celebrate them. It ain't got to be nothing major, but you make sure you celebrate it. Don't look at it like it ain't nothing but another year because it's another year that you made it in marriage. And marriage is something that people give up on so easily. It ain't for everybody. I'm not saying that it's for everybody. I'm not saying that everybody's built to go through shit. But some people understand the bigger purpose of marriage and they understand that it's to create legacy and to build with one another. And that alone is worth the sacrifice for some people. So you all be blessed. You all enjoy your day. I'm going to get my day started. Um, I was here last night working. Uh, and it was a lot of y'all that came through. I enjoyed talking to y'all. I really enjoyed talking to y'all. One woman even told me, that when she watched my live video about them children being in the bed, that she got pissed off. Because I was talking about when he go over there and fucking the woman, at the, end, the woman ain't got no train in the bed. She said, you really stepped on my toes with that one. She said, you stepped on my toes so bad that I had to turn your, your video off because you really had me feeling some type of way. She said, but when I thought about it, I really had to hold myself accountable and get them children out of our fucking bed. So, you all be blessed. I ain't going to say that every video that I do, you're going to like it. But what I will say is, it's for somebody. All right. Y'all be blessed.